Ladies and gentlemen, today we're back to looking at the budget end of mini PCs, which is actually a nice change of pace. Blackview mainly deals in rugged phones, but the MP60 is their first entry into the mini PC market. So, who do they contact for a no BS review? Oh, right, me. This free sample features the Intel Ceron N5095, a quad-core 10-watt processor, 16GB of RAM, and a 512GB M.2 SATA drive. There's also an 8-256GB model, which I think most people would be fine with for the budget end. The introductory pricing is $200 for that one, and $280 for the 16-512GB model, which is pretty good. But this is a very competitive field, and there are other options at a similar price, such as the Tricky Green G3. In the box is a manual, monitor mount, screws, HDMI cable, and power supply. The Blackview MP60 is a decent looking budget mini PC, which is mostly made out of plastic. I think I'd prefer the black over the blue, but the LED at the top is not a bad touch. Like most of the budget minis, it has a basic set of ports with dual USB 3, 5 gigabit, and a USB 2 on the front. On the side, yes, side this time, is another USB 2 port, dual HDMI supporting a pair of 4K60 monitors, gigabit ethernet, and a dual purpose audio jack for speaker output or microphone input. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are included. Windows 11 Pro is pre-installed, but if you want to turn it into a Linux box, you can. My Ubuntu tests worked fine straight off the USB. Or if you want a Chrome OS Flex Mini, that mostly works too. It didn't have a driver for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but Ethernet worked fine. Disassembling the MP60 is easy, which is really nice for a change. The two locks allow you to take off the bottom section, if you're not using it for a 2.5 inch SATA SSD. So, you can make your mini PC even smaller. Kinda cool idea actually. But first, let's remove the two screws to find the 2.5 inch SATA slot. Easy! Now we can pull off the bottom section since it's unlocked and it connects via USB-C, which is interesting. But to get inside, there are still a few screws. And of course, they're under the rubber feet. Rip those off, get the four screws out, and Bob's your uncle. He sure is! Watch out for the LED cable. Oh, that's a very small aluminium heatsink with a blower type fan. Why did I get a sudden chill through my body? Anyway, there's a NETAC M.2 SATA SSD, which I haven't heard of. There's another two screws and the board comes out easily for once. Underneath is a CMOS battery and no memory slots, which means non-upgradable soldered on memory. All right, benchmark time. The JK01 was a budget mini PC I tested that had the exact same CPU. So that's a good comparison point. And since the Trig Key G3 is available for the same price, I'll compare that too. In single core, the Blackview MP60 had an insignificant 1% faster score than the JK01, and 4% over the G3. In multi core, the MP60 drops behind the JK01 by almost 14%, and that's with the same CPU. It's 19% behind the G3. In video encoding, the MP60 was ahead by 6% against the JK01, and behind the G3 by 16%. While the soldered memory is only clocked at 2400 MHz, the MP60 still came out slightly ahead of the JK01 by 2%. But the N5100 iGPU found in the G3 has 24 execution units compared to just 16 on the N5095, and it really shows with the MP60 behind 29% in DX11, and in DX12, it's 37%. Pretty much the same as the JK01. So overall, both CPU and GPU performance is lagging behind the G3. The included M.2 SATA drive is a pretty good performer in both read and write speeds, which was a nice surprise. As with the other budget units, I test the video playback capabilities. YouTube at 1080p 60fps, dropped 91 frames out of 10,000, with most of those being right at the start. At 1440p 60fps, it was 98 frames, again, most at the beginning. And at 4K 60fps, 110 frames were dropped. It's an okay result, but was seen better with other budget minis. 
While gaming is never recommended on these units, the weaker integrated graphics on the Celeron N5095 means only really simple modern games can be played, or much older titles. And while the Blackview MP60 performs worse in multi-core than the JK01, its emulation performance will be heavily GPU limited. So here's the emulation performance from the JK01 video to give you an idea of what's possible. PlayStation Portable games run mostly fine, with the integrated graphics being the bottleneck. So the resolution scale is really important. Dreamcast holds up pretty well, with some frame drops depending on the title. Again, due to the integrated graphics. The Dolphin emulator kept crashing with Direct3D 12 renderer, so I had to drop it down to 11. Some GameCube games can run at double resolution scale, and still hold a lock 60 fps. Others can't even hold 30 unless at native res. Nintendo Wii games run pretty well at native res, but any higher and the frame rate falls to pieces. Power draw was surprisingly good. The JK01 uses a lot more at idle and load. Must have been that blindingly bright and obnoxious RGB, amongst other things. But the MP60 is also a pretty quiet mini PC, even under load. Note that for noise levels, all the fanless silent mini PCs are listed as 29 dB ambient, as the graph looked weird when they were just zeros. However, we need to take into account when firing up the Cinebench multi-core workload, it doesn't take long for the CPU to get to egg frying point. At 105C maximum temperature, it's by far the worst performer. Even the fanless mini PCs did better. The tiny heatsink and fan is not good enough for handling the 10 watt CPU. But I could have told the engineer that just by looking at it. So if you were wondering why there was a drop in multi-core performance, it's thermal throttling. The MP60 has to draw cool air from the top cutout and then disperse the hot air back up again, which, well, it doesn't work. It idles at around 57C, which is surprisingly high for such a low-powered CPU with active cooling. Since it's quiet, I thought I'd check if I could ramp up the fan in the BIOS to at least get the CPU load temp under 100C. But nope, there are no fan settings in the BIOS. The included M.2 SATA drive only has a drive temperature sensor, which hit a maximum of 53C. That's okay, but as with all budget minis, apart from the Intel NUC Essential, there's no cooling on the M.2. So, let's look at the pros and cons of the Blackview MP60. I like the stackable design. It's something cool and different. It's easy to disassemble. The launch price is reasonable and it's a pretty quiet mini PC, but the cooling is pretty poor. The CPU thermal throttles under load. Memory is soldered on and graphics performance is lacking when compared to something like the Trigkey G3N5100, which I reviewed last year. And did you know I reviewed a total of 11 budget mini PCs in 2022? I picked my five favorites and made a video here, which you should definitely check out. Cheers.